also encourage you to please take your bulletins with you today. Um, so um, that, uh, please keep that in mind. A couple other things. Uh, Victor, Brandy, and I will be greeting you after the service. We'll be positioned at the exits. Uh, so we encourage people not to pump up on their way out. I'd also like to point out that as you come to worship each week, as we gather like this, you probably need to come prepared with your coats because there are specifications about in ventilation indoors. You notice we have some windows open, we have our fans running, but it's an all important part of that, so you'll just need to come prepared. Uh, face it, it's more comfortable than being outside today. So, uh, we're grateful for that. I think uh, Sandy Anthony has an announcement this morning, so we'll keep rolling with our service ministry. Please stand as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. <laughs> Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and with one another. We confess that we are not away for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Beloved, we are God's children. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. And in Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for today is from the Leviticus chapter 19. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your 
10. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The prominent Jewish rabbis during the first century did their level best to count up all the commandments in what we would now call the Old Testament. The result of their tedious tabulation was that there were 613 commands in the Hebrew Scriptures, 248 positive commands, you shalls, corresponding to the number of parts of the human body as understood at the time, and 365 negative commands, you shall not, corresponding to the number of days from that total number of commandments, the rabbis would in turn summarize them with the so-called Ten Commandments corresponding to the number of fingers on human hands. In the conversation with the religious authorities in our Gospel reading today, Jesus boils down the 613 and then 10 to two basic commandments that hinge together side by side. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The greatest commandment is not one command but two. Love of God and love of neighbor cannot be separate. Good catechetical lesson for our compliments this morning. Now what does this mean in the words of Martin Luther? First of all, love of God without love of neighbor spells cop out. We cannot love God as an abstraction. We cannot love God as a moral principle separated from common, down-to-earth human existence. 
If the closest thing to the face of God we know and see and recognize in our daily walk is our neighbor, then how can we love God without loving that neighbor? This is the basic meaning of the Christian life. God makes God's self available to be loved through Jesus Christ in the person and need of the neighbor. Love of God without love of neighbor is an unlocated or dislocated love. Love needs concrete direction. Love is real. Love is relational. The writer of 1 John sums up our need to keep love of God inseparable from love of neighbor. Those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. Love of God without love of neighbor spells combat. On the other hand, love of neighbor without love of God spells burnout. There is a transcendent sense in which the command to love God remains first. Oh yes, there are plenty of altruists and humanists and even atheists in our world who do a tremendous amount of good. But when human beings become the total reference point, we lose the depth of hope needed to love the neighbors over the long haul. Our love even for fellow human beings become shallower as we are driven more by the daily demands of life than by the love of God that flows through us. We are merely the conduits for divine love to flow to the neighbor, but we often get confused and think we are the well, source, spring, and origin of love. We need to be reminded that for God's sake, we love God. For God's sake, we love our neighbor. And the highest form of neighbor love is to share one's faith in God so that the neighbor also develops a relationship with God. Again, love of neighbor without love of God spells burnout. But as we move deeper, into prayerful meditation upon these two commandments, we also begin to realize that both commands, taken separately or together, are ineffective without God's prior love for us. We cannot love God without God's loving help and strength. We cannot love our neighbor without God's loving help and strength. Yet the author of 1 John reminds us, we love because God first loved us. That's one of the key verses of our understanding of this congregation, Lutheran Church of God's love. We love God because God first loved us. We love our neighbor. God first loved us. We love ourselves because God first loved us. How do we know deep down that God first loved us? Because God the Father gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who lived in communion with neighbors and sinners, died on a cross and rose again to give us all the strength to love. desire to put 
put into a nutshell the will of God for your life, the two great commandments get to the heart of the matter. You shall love the Lord your God with your whole being. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love of God without love of neighbor spells cop out. Love of neighbor without love of God spells burnout. But even with the will of God, we need the wherewithal from God. Two commandments need the gospel, the good news. Jesus Christ came down deep into your journey to be your strength to love both God and neighbor. As divine and human, Christ Jesus becomes, in fact, both your God and your neighbor in disguise. Christ Jesus comes to be your lifeline to both God the Father and to the neighbor near and far. It all comes together right here, brothers and sisters. God's will to love God and the neighbor and God's wherewithal and strength to adore God and to serve the neighbor with good courage during a time when we need a lot more of God's love shed.
Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these young people, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. As the vicar presents them, please come forward. I present Taylor Deppie and Aiden Zetterberg, who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Merciful God, we thank you for this sister and brother whom you have made your own by water and word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. stand at this point. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
Jesus' sake, stir up in Aiden the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. share, um, announce their name, uh, maybe give a little bit about their interest, mm -hmm. and then share your Bible verse and why you selected that Bible verse. congregation may still please rise. Let us rejoice with this sister and brother in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. You guys can turn and face the congregation and let's give them some in God's grace and mercy. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. In your love you speak to your church. Give courage and the bond of love to all who gather in your name, that this love may turn toward our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. In your love you create the earth filled with living things of every kind. 
sustain the intricate connections among plants, insects, animals, and organisms we don't even know or recognize. Bless the work of scientists who help us extend neighbor love to the natural world, especially during this time of pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. In your love, you guide with justice. Inspire leaders and citizens for truthful conversations and wise policies, that decisions are made for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy. In your love, you tenderly care for your children and nurse them to health. Bring relief to all those needing healing, hope, or restoration this day. Especially we pray for the victims of the wildfires in California, Colorado, and Utah. For the family and friends of Helen Clark, for Carl, Steve, Ed, Michael, George, and those we name aloud or silently at this time. Lord, in your mercy. In your love, you accompany us in life's transitions. We pray for new parents, those grieving a loss, those who are retiring, and those embarking on new ventures. Lord, in your mercy. In your love, we remember those who were dear to us and now rest in you. We give thanks for Martin Luther and all who seek to reform and renew your church. Give us courage to live out your gospel, revealing your love until our days on earth have ended. Lord, in your mercy. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share the peace.
upon you and be gracious to you.